Hello everybody, my name is Pasquale, this is Iris Palmio, my personal project to reach financial independence by age 55 and it's going to be, you know, quite difficult. But today I have a very, a very special person, a VIP person, coming directly from the top of the top investors of Vitoro platform, Jay Nemesis. How are you, Jay? I'm good. I'm doing well. Today uh, happens to be probably my best day of the year in terms of uh, portfolio performance. Uh, I'm pretty happy today. Pity I'm not copying you at this time, so. <laughs> 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 Actually, you are, I understand you are a celebrity now because if I'm not mistaken, you were interviewed by CNBC recently. Uh, Bloomberg. Bloomberg. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I've I've been uh, been featured in a few Bloomberg articles now. Um, I've been on Channel Four, BBC. Uh, yeah, quite quite a lot of stuff uh, seems to ever be increasing. Um, so you're on a busy schedule now. Thanks for accepting my invite. <laughs> this interview. <laughs> so um, I have a couple of questions that could, that you know that my curiosity. Every time I see people like you being so successful in this world and reaching the top investor on a platform like eToro, I am try to understand what uh, brought you there. So the most probably uh, important question for me to understand is really where are you coming from where are you now and where you want to be in the foresee next foreseeable future i mean you had uh, quite a long story on itoro and i presume also you know other investments how did it happen yeah um i mean i guess it spans back to my childhood really like my teenage years um by the time i was like 13 i was really interested in politics and in economics and in uh, investing you know, um, I just found it super interesting. Um, anything that was some sort of a big kind of system or ecosystem was um, just kind of interesting to me to learn about. So, yeah, I learned about investing. I learned about how, how money works, how currencies work, how, how markets work, um, fully self-taught. Uh, and, yeah, I, I always knew that, I you know, I figured out from a young age that investing um, early is important and compound growth is, you know, basically the most powerful force force yeah. in uh, in making money that there is if, if you want to make money then the best way to do it is to start investing um as soon as you can so uh that's that's what i did and you know i started investing when i was about 18 um wow. and joined eToro back in 20 uh 2013 and the rest is history really yeah well hopefully it's going to be a long history it's not stopping soon um, <laughs> But how did you approach the world of investing? Because it's not something that everybody at the age you started wants to do. Probably people, you know, look at the age to drive sports car, to go out with ladies or <laughs> something very, very completely different from what you did to. Actually, it was my life. I mean, I'm 42 now and I probably was um, dreaming a Ferrari at the age you started investing. <laughs> so how did, you know, what was the the big uh, ignite that it's something that ignite your passion on this on this world um i just i just find it all fascinating you know um i, I just like learning about stuff i think okay. really um that's that's really the core of it i i like learning about new products and i like technology and i like thinking about where society is going to be in the future um you know i was thinking about electric cars and and uh, green energy and things like that you know 20 years ago um when i was a teenager i was thinking oh you know what's what's the world going to look like are we going to use hydrogen power are we going to use wind power are we going to use tidal power okay. um and the same for for computers i was thinking you know which way is this going a graphics card's going to become a thing um back then it was kind of up in the air we didn't know if um computers were going to have graphics cards or not and obviously now now we look at it and we think well that's obvious um and it's the same thing for everything even even you know modes of transportation airports like every any any sort of system mm -hmm. um you know how we're working online what documents we're using the whole thing i just love thinking about it all and trying to figure out where it's going in the future and that kind of just lends itself very well for investing you know because if you're kind of thinking about this stuff all the time you get a good idea of um, which technologies have have some sort of a future and which ones don't okay so basically the fuel of your success is just curiosity yeah exactly exactly 
And, uh, you know, I, as far as I can see, you have also some other passion because if I read your um, bio properly on eToro, you started something like a computer technician. So you were already something passionate about electronic. And I, it seems to see in you know, some of your videos on YouTube, you're a gamer because I saw some Doom uh, stuff behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, um, I was actually a professional gamer for a while wow. as well. Um, back when professional gamer meant earning, you know, just about minimum wage if you were one of the best in the world. Okay. <laughs> um, so it didn't pay very well. But yeah, I, I've been a gamer since, you know, the same sort of age. Uh, I, I love games. Again, it's the same sort of thing. You know, I love the strategy of it and, and um, the kind of thought processes that go behind it uh, and trying to find the most efficient way of doing things. So okay. I play a lot of um, strategy games. Those, those are the games I play the most. And uh, yeah, and board games and stuff as well and as as you say it just lends itself very well into uh you know getting interested in technology okay just a bit of curiosity uh, did you play civilization in as a one of your game yeah so i uh civilization 5 i think i have like thousand hours played okay. on steam so yeah uh, and i used to play civilization 3 and civilization 2 as well so yeah uh, those those are exactly the kind of games that i love so where you can put down your curiosity, but also you will to develop whatever you're doing. Yeah, I, you know, the, the kind of idea of uh, shaping society the way you want to shape it and yeah. building your own civilization, you know, as the game suggests. Uh, I mean, you know, I play a lot of political games as well. Um, there's a game called Democracy, okay. uh, Democracy 4 that I play, which is basically, you know, you taking over uh, the... The country you know pick a country the uk italy france uh, us you take over the country and you decide the tax policy and okay. you know the business environment the laws everything um and i find that really interesting as well it's a good uh, good way of like you know theorizing stuff so you work on macroeconomics by playing games and then you put in your <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i just enjoy thinking about it all you know Something that uh, drew my curiosity here is that you succeeded in, on eToro as a platform, as a top investor, but do you see something different in yourself compared to other people that, like for example, uh, I was trying to be a popular investor in eToro, I, uh, I joined the partnership and so on, but then at a certain point I realized that it was too heavy for me to carry on my shoulder other people's money because it was a big responsibility. Whatever you're mm. doing, you can lose other people's money. What do you think it's something that is, you know, define you differently from other people there? Join the platform or in, in general term on investment? I think to some extent, you've got to be a little bit robotic, right? You, you can't be too emotional. Um, and again, another thing that I learned early was, you know, to not think of money as, as money, but of everything in terms of percentages. Uh, you know, today is a really good example, right? So today I'm currently up around 6% on my portfolio, okay. which is, you know, an amazing day of profit. Um, but if I think about that in, in terms of numbers, in terms of the amount of money I've made for copiers, it's like $4 million. Wow. If I am thinking to myself about opening and closing trades that are worth, you know, half a million dollars yeah. with other people's money, um, I would trade differently. Uh, you know, I would, I would be more fearful and more cautious and I wouldn't trade the way that I really want to. So the way I tend to think about it is that I imagine that nobody else is copying me. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I warn people uh, about volatility as much as I can so that, you know, I, I feel uh, a little bit better about, you know, having okay. warned people that, you know, these things go up and down. And I, and I just treat it, you know, treat it like it's my own and, and just think about the percentages. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Actually, for me, instead, was just seeing um, a red dot somewhere in the month, and then I was thinking, oh, I'm losing some other people's money. How can I avoid that? And then I was doing other mistakes. So, be, yeah. like you said, being a bit robotic and just not to think what in terms of money, but just percentages. 
Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a real learning curve. Even even with that kind of mindset going into it, I still, uh, you know, when I first became popular on Itoro to to a large level, you know, I was getting like my first thousand copiers at that kind of point, and managing my first, you know, uh, five hundred thousand dollars of other people's money. At that point, was where you know. I kind of had to come to terms with it um, and it did take time because you know for the first month or so I was chasing profits and chasing trades I was like oh no this person's just copied me I need to make the money like immediately and get them in the green and um, and eventually you learn to just kind of not care so much about that and and you know um, focus more on telling people to think long term and, and you know just let your portfolio do the work for you. You just learn to stick to the plan and to your strategy and let the emotions go yeah exactly exactly um you're an investor as we we're telling the whole interview but are you something different also do you save money or do you plan other stuff rather than being just investment like i don't know some some people when they reach a certain point they think about um in, uh, real estate investment or somebody drives some money on the peer-to-peer -peer lending do you have other kind of investment or you just focus on the stock market at the moment? Stock market at the moment. Yeah, so um, I got into cryptocurrencies in 2013 and, and basically all of my cryptocurrency essentially is outside of eToro. Um, okay. So I still have that and, you know, I used to trade actively, but these days I tend to just kind of leave it alone and, and let it do its thing. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't gotten into real estate. I'm not sure if I will or not. Um, you know, I, I own my own house, but that's uh, that's about it. Um, I think you know it's it's a it's a good safe investment, but for for me, I much prefer to invest in things that are really going to impact the world. You know, I want to be able to look back in in uh, ten years or twenty years time and and think that my decisions have led towards good things, right? Good products being made or jobs being created. And and a building doesn't really do that. Um, land doesn't really do that. So it doesn't really fill that gap in me. It feels more like I'm leeching from society than than kind of this give and take relationship okay. where I'm I'm helping companies build stuff and I'm um, directly funding stuff. Uh, and, and I mean that also is is a big part of why I like eToro. You know, the fact that I'm I'm helping my copiers at the end of the day. You know, yeah. I'm 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 earning them money and yeah, I'm getting paid while I do it. But um, the the fact that I'm helping people that maybe don't have that much in savings and they, they start with $500 and by the time they stop copying me, they have $5,000. That's, um, you know, that's kind of the dream really to, to help normal people understand um, better ways of saving money. Um, yeah. Yeah. And on, on that side, you can also think that you're helping other company to grow. If you believe in a business, you believe on what they're producing or what they may produce in the future. You're just yeah. giving them your trust your confidence, then they grow in their yeah. growth. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm providing them with resources to help them achieve their goals. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I'm, I try very hard to be like an ethical investor as well. You know, I, I don't invest in oil and in, in guns in smoking yeah. um, and anything that I think is, you know, a net negative to the world. Um, even companies like Facebook, I, I won't, I won't uh, go long on Facebook because I'm not convinced that they're actually good for the world. Um, so, you know, I, I want I want to be able to look back with a with a clean conscience and, and know that my money and my resources and my time was spent making things better, not worse. Um, okay. And that's that's a big part of how I uh, look at investing. So you can make money being ethical. You don't need to be like. Uh, yeah, I, I think that there is, you know, I, I mean, I, I hope that I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, I'm evidence of that for people, right? That yeah. you can invest uh, in, in good things um, and, and still make money at the same time. Okay. Now that we are talking about investment, uh, probably this evening we will, we will know who is going to be the next president of the United States. How do you think the, this election will impact the investment in the medium term? Because it, Obviously, in the long term, you know, every four years they change the present. But in the medium term, what do you think is going to happen? Um, I think the markets are going to continue to go up, basically. Um, you know, I, I did. Uh, I, I've been through a few elections um, while I've been investing. And one thing I've kind of come to realize is that it doesn't matter who's in power. Um, companies still make good products. They still sell those products. The economy still grows as a whole. 
um, and everything generally trends upwards. You know, it may be a bit bumpy sometimes, um, okay. especially around the election. Like the, the month of the election is always pretty bumpy. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, markets respond more to uh, more to the the kind of global macro trends than than any single nation. Even the U.S. stock market. You know, the the trade war with China will have more impact on how markets perform mm-hmm. than uh, who wins this presidential election. I think. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's kind of the way I look at it. And and actually, um, you know, I, I went and read quite a few um, scientific studies and, and journals um, about this actually this year, and and they basically reinforced that belief. You know, that that actually it doesn't really matter who who's in charge, um, red or blue, and and the same for other countries as well to a large extent. Unless it's something really extreme, things tend to still continue. You know, pretty uh, pretty much in the same direction. The markets flow just uh, follow the flow of the river, and everything else is forgot. Probably, yeah, pretty yeah. much, pretty much. Um, do you have any other project in your mind? Because at the moment, I presume you have your Hitoro partnership, but do you have other projects you are planning to uh, develop in the foreseeable future? Yeah, I mean, I've thought about all sorts of things. Um, you know, I've I've been approached by by um, family funds and and small uh, hedge funds of different types before to to work for them, but that doesn't really interest me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm quite entrepreneurial. I actually used to uh, run a, a gaming tournament website, um, oh. and I think when I've got a bit more funding behind me, I wouldn't mind trying to give that another shot. I think it was a good good idea and a good project but i was a bit young when i when i first uh, was working on it so yeah. i'd like to work on that again um i've considered making youtube content as well like financial content uh and you know i'm on the fence about if it's worthwhile or not you know i don't one thing i really want to make sure i do is is not spread myself too thin um you know i'm my my number one concern is is making money for my copiers um okay. And you know that's that's it at the end of the day. So so nothing else, um, nothing else big really planned. But you know I do have some ideas. And and the other thing, of course, is that I I do enjoy investing generally. And and so you know per- perhaps in the future maybe a, a venture capital fund or something would be really okay. cool to do. Yeah. Um, but that's that's a few years away yet. Yeah, it's not in the in in the short term probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was I was actually um, asking something else about the YouTube channel because I was thinking some a person like you with so many coppers and so many followers on Toro, I was expecting to find a, a huge YouTube channel. Instead, I think you don't at the moment you are not developing uh, that much, but probably is something that you want to do in the future. Yeah, as as I said, it's something that I've thought about a lot. And you know, in in 2018, um, when I first kind of started to see a lot of success, I I experimented with putting out like weekly update videos, and and I, I experimented with some slightly different content. I did content um, covering cryptocurrencies and and other stuff. But I'm I'm not a very good presenter. <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm not a uh, super charismatic on camera. I don't think so. Um, it's it's not really where my strengths lie, and as, as much as I think um, I could add quite a lot of value uh, and, and help people learn the kind of stuff that I've learned, mm-hmm. um, I'm just not sure that I'm the right person for it, right? And so I need to think about things like hiring an editor and hiring someone to present the information. And before I know it, you know, it's turned into like quite a big risky venture to, to take on. So, um, you know, that's, that's why I'm kind of on the fence about it. I don't want to rule out uh, doing it because maybe I will at some point decide to do that. Mm-hmm. But for the time being, I'm pretty happy with the kind of content that I'm putting out at the moment, you know? Okay. Um, to follow all your daily routines, yeah, are you strict in your daily routine? Do you plan it? Are you able to manage your day in the way you want every day? Yeah, I'm not at all strict. Um, <laughs> most most like big important CEOs and investors will tell you that they wake up and they read the news in the morning and then they do this and then they do that and they read an ebook or whatever. Um, you know, I get up at different times every day. I go to bed at different times every day. Sometimes I stay up all night watching election news. Sometimes uh, I play games when I should be uh, should be watching the markets. Yeah. Uh, not not too often. Um, but I think that's kind of what keeps me sane, you know. Um, investing is actually a really lonely job. Um, so I think making sure that you kind of have a flexible lifestyle around it and you're able to kind of, you know, 
drop it and and do other things and go outside for a walk or you know play some games or socialize with your family um is is important and you know for for me i trade uh, mainly us markets but i also trade european markets and asian markets and cryptocurrencies so you know essentially that's 24 hours of my time right i can't i can't be watching it all of the time so generally i try and uh, try and make sure that i have time off um but, but that being said i do try and stick to a rough schedule you know my my working my core working hours are basically when the us markets are open sometimes i'll you know take an hour off or go do something but essentially i'm always watching at market open and market close regardless yeah even i even said that nowadays with your mobile phone you can check every time if you need to if you are something yeah. important happening yeah no I, i never i never go anywhere that hasn't got an internet connection <laughs> <laughs> So no small houses in the mountains so Italy. <laughs> no, no, exactly, exactly. Uh, do you think the, is, you need any kind of special gift to succeed in the world of investment, or I mean, the right education makes everyone everyone possible to succeed in this field? Um, I think to some extent you need uh, you need certain certain qualities i mean there's different styles of investing as well that that lend themselves to different types of personalities um but i think one one thing you need is is you know as as bad as it sounds this kind of lack of emotion um because that that's the hardest thing to control um and every investor every every book you read on the subject will tell you that um you know the the fear and greed cycles and and how they can kind of uh play with your mind um on trades and and also even just you know um having regrets and stuff you know once you do a trade you need to forget about it and move on to the next trade it doesn't matter if it made lots of profit or if it made a massive loss you need to just forget about it and move on because it's no longer important mm -hmm. um in terms of learning about it i i think anyone is capable of understanding how how financial markets and work and and you know what good investing strategies are i think the hard part is um is predictions um trying to figure out how the market is going to view a certain event for example these elections you know um mm -hmm. the market has moved pretty wildly up and down um throughout the US elections as it's kind of looked more obvious that Biden was going to win mm -hmm. then it kind of favored Trump and now it's kind of swung back to Biden slightly yeah. um and i think you know for for me what's made my portfolio perform well during this time is that i i was very sure in my head of which way things were going to go before that event okay. um and and i had contingencies in place if it didn't um so it's about being prepared and it's about uh kind of you know being being sure of your own ideas uh as well so some people are going to be good at that and some people are, are not going to be quite so good at it so you are always to wait you have to prepare for the uh, good investment but also you have to prepare for the black swan that you can encounter during the yeah. time of volatility. See, see, it's interesting you say that you know a lot of people talk about black swan events and how you know you can't predict them and it's yeah. true that you can't predict what the black swan event is going to be but you can identify it early and act early um and and that's what i did with covid and that's how i managed to um do so well through march and that's mm -hmm. also what i've done with the us elections um so you know i i don't buy into this idea that you know um everyone is going to end up being victim to a massive market crash um it's likely that most people are i have been i've been caught out by the cryptocurrency crash in 2018 mm -hmm. um but at the same time i do think that all of these things are avoidable if you're paying enough attention to the right places um and and constantly you know yeah. focusing on 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 what's happening in the world so you can't avoid it completely but you can actually turn the events in your favor if you are able to foresee what is going to be happening in close to the to that event yes exactly um if somebody wants to start investing now i mean 2020 with internet connection there are brokers everywhere there are information everywhere free of charge you can you know watch video on youtube do you have any specific um advice you can give to those people that want to start now as a fresh investors um i think the number one golden rule that i see so many people breaking is uh leverage 
Do not use any leverage. Do not use. Do not trade options markets. Do not trade. Uh, uh, do not short stuff. Do not go uh, on five times margin or, or lending money or anything like that. Don't don't invest money you don't have. Those are the things that really undo people quickly. Um, as long as you do that and and you start off small, um, you've got a good chance of of learning what you're doing. Um, while keeping the price of that learning low, right? Everyone's going to make a lot of mistakes in their first few years trading. And I've been trading for, you know, over a decade now, and I'm, I'm still finding that I'm learning a lot every year. Um, even this year, I think I've learned so much more than I knew back in 2019. And in 2019, I thought the same thing of 2018. Mm-hmm. So it, it all takes experience. Um, so, you know, start off slowly uh, and don't use leverage. Those are uh, at least not at the start. Those are those are the things I would recommend. Okay. And what about there's a big debate about this if using the demo account or not? Because some people are saying if you use the demo account, you don't put your emotion on your money when you're trading. While if you use the real money, you're probably treating the trade differently. Do you think the demo account is a tool to be used or is not? I think demo accounts are really useful, um, but only really for learning how trades execute, how to use the platform, where everything is, um, you know, what it's going to look like when you're making a profit, how to set your stop losses and your take profits, um, you know, more experience in looking at candlesticks, testing out different ideas, different strategies. Um, you know, I think uh, there's definitely a place for demo accounts in the first few months. Um, but after that, I would say that trading with real money is, is better. Um, yeah. Okay. So good advice from one of the top experts of Vitoro today. Um, thank you very much for being with me this evening. It's, it's been a pleasure and uh, you know, um, be giving some kind of advices to uh, people that are not so expert from a person that throughout a decade, as you, as you said before, did his own mistakes and learn from what he did in the past to bring exceptional, um, an exceptional future to himself and to all his copiers is an honor for me. Thank you very much for being here this evening, uh, Jay. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me. And everybody, for everybody else, thanks for following this video up to the end. My name is Pasquale, this is Yeris Spanio, and see you in the next video. Bye.